Hello everyone and welcome to day seven of the Liab Learning Challenge. Um, again, I am Deirdre. I am the founder of Liab. For those who are new here, Liab is an e-startup focused on helping Gen Z Filipinos transition into working life. And part of what helps you transition into working life is gaining skills that can make you more, more employable or competitive in the job market. So that's why we arranged this learning challenge. It's 10 days. We're on day seven now. And we've curated a couple of like soft skills and hard skills that you can that you can learn and practice so that when it comes for you to when the time comes for you to job hunt, this is something that you can actually say that you've tried already. And it also shows that you are always open to learning new things. So thank you so much for those who have joined us for the past couple of days. Really appreciate. Um, last night, I saw that because we took a break from homework, I saw that a lot of you guys have been catching up on submitting the homework, and I love it. I really appreciate how you guys took the time to practice the skills that we learned through these sessions. So we will be issuing certificates, of course, to those who um, submitted their homework. We will be reach, Our team will be reaching out to you um, within the day. And because for this session, again, we will resume homework. Again, if you want the certificates, um, you must do the homework. So we're sure we're giving the certificate to someone who's actually practiced what they learned. All right? We don't want to be a certificate factory here where you just log in for five minutes and we give you like, yay, you participated and you learned the skill already. It's not like that. We want you guys to practice it. That's the best way to learn. So anyway, today's session is... A, a really great follow-up to the session we had yesterday um, on Cindy Burdett's session on how to choose the best business idea. And a couple of you guys had questions about, um, but how do we come up with these ideas? Um, how do you know if your idea is great, right? So we have a session today on brainstorming to really draw out those ideas from you. What are the different techniques you can do um, to make sure that you come up with enough, dia, enough ideas to choose from? Um, and I am really happy that we have um, a teacher today who actually practices brainstorming all the time in his job. So we have Dino Alcoseba. He's a product manager from Bukas. And what product managers, product managers do actually is they facilitate also these brainstorming sessions with the rest of the team. So they have sessions with um, after they talk to their customers, for example, like what Cindy mentioned yesterday, you got to talk to your customers, you got to talk to your stakeholders, all the different people that you got to talk to. But then after talking to them, what do you do, right? How do you, how do you make sure that you come up with the right ideas from their, the insights from them? So product managers, that's part of what they do. They, they talk to people, they interview their customers, their stakeholders, and then they go back to a team, a team of designers and developers um, and they come up with different ways to maybe find solutions to the problems that that they now um, started noticing. Um, Dino also and he will share with this in a bit um, he's been practicing design thinking for some time because this is something that um, we've also discussed a couple of times in the group before. Um, we had Joey and they want to talk about empathy and how that's very important in design thinking and now we are on the practical side of it. Um, now that you know how to how to build your empathy, how do you then get to apply it in, in like times in work that you need to come up with some ideas, right? So Dino will sort of um, touch on design thinking again today and how that is practically applied now through brainstorming. So that's that's a really long intro now for Dino. He will talk about it um, for the rest of his session. So again. If you have any questions at any point during this uh, session, you can comment it in the Facebook Live and we will have uh, time after Dino discusses the homework to answer and address some of your questions. And we have a really neat activity for today. Later on um, during Dino's session, we will be posting a link to uh, a brainstorming tool, an online brainstorming tool that we will all get to try out um, live so if you guys can watch out for that uh, later and try to participate that would be really great so without um any more stuff from me i will be leaving now um and then i'll be passing you off to dino and then i'll see you guys 
later. So do enjoy and participate in today's session. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Deirdre, for, for the introduction. So hi, guys. Um, and so I'm Dino, uh, and uh, I'm here today to discuss with you guys brainstorming the design thinking way. So just a brief um, introduction about myself. I, you can call me Dino. Um, I graduated in uh, 2009 with a degree in AB psychology. And uh, somehow, some way, I wanted to pursue a career in human resources, which is what normally uh, psychologists go into. Uh, but here I am in a tech company, so like Deirdre mentioned, called Bupa. A role called the product manager. So the way Deirdre explained it, basically we work with programmers and designers to help build and improve products. So think Gmail or Angkas or Grab, yung mga uh, ginagamit ninyong uh, different applications. Um, I help these guys help build and improve these products. So I help prioritize what features are to be done based on an understanding of the business. So um, what I what I do is um, we talk to customers, um, we go back home, we brainstorm, we take a look at the different features that we could offer these customers and eventually um, build out the, the rollout. So ideation, um, which is connected to brainstorming, um, is something that I did one of the important for this session. How will this help you? So basically, all companies rely on people being able to generate ideas so that businesses can improve. So the idea generation part of all companies and all businesses is really apparent. However, a lot of people can generate ideas, but there hasn't been enough effort to be able to create a process around the ideas so that there can be next steps. So this is where design thinking comes in. Design thinking comes in in the brainstorming process. So that you cannot just have, you cannot just generate the ideas, but you're able to create next steps already. So that you can you can use this when bringing people together so that you can come up with a plan. So this this can help you in any job that you go into um, in, in your career. So hopefully this this these different um, these different exercises will be able to help. So the design thinking process, so according to some of my friends in Stanford and, and Google Ventures um, define it define it like this. Um, so let's start first with brainstorming tips. So brainstorming is collaborative. In brainstorming, you should always have a design because ideas are not worth much without a resolution. In brainstorming, you always set a time limit for brainstorming exercises. So I'll talk about it later during our brainstorming exercise. And you have to make sure that everyone has context about what to brainstorm. So it's very important, um, I think as what Deirdre mentioned earlier, to have empathy, to understand what they're really brainstorming about. So I think this was shown before. So I just want to show you the whole process of design thinking from the empathizing the problem, defining what the problem is, ideating, this is what we will talk about a lot today, prototyping, being able to create an actual working thing that you can test out with specific users and gain feedback. What is focused on the ideation part? How can we generate ideas? What are activities that we can use in order to generate ideas and eventually allow us to understand more and mine these ideas so that we can have a concrete output? So that's part of the design thinking process. And some of these activities have been defined in this book. So this book is called Sprint by Jake Knapp. So Jake Knapp is part of Google Ventures and he created this book in order for us to, in order for us to solve big problems, test new ideas in just five days. Since I don't have five days, since I only have one hour, um, I try my best to make you go through the different exercises that Jake Knapp so there is a concept in brainstorming, and you can take a look at brainstorming as two parts, diverging and converging. So diverging is flaring out. Diverging is opening your mind to different ideas and not choosing to judge right away these ideas. So this is an essential part of the brainstorming because it allows you to explore. It allows you to open your mind and it allows you to go ahead and explore all of the possibilities of a specific idea. But of course, 
when you explore all the possibilities of an idea, it's also important to understand that not all ideas can be implemented. So this is where the converging happens. So in a brainstorm, it's important to have divergent thinking so that you can explore all the possibilities. But it's also important to have convergent thinking so that you can go ahead and try to mine these ideas and try to see if, will this actually work? Um, will this really, will this, this is something that people will understand. This is something that people will like. So an idea is just an idea until it's actually dissected. And that's where the convergent part comes in. Okay, so these are, these are two attitudes. And uh, this will be two attitudes and activities. Uh, and this will be explained further when we go through the simulation. But the first, the first attitude and the first mindset that I'd like to explain is the yes and mindset. So the yes and mindset is basically saying yes to certain ideas and building on top of it. So this is where divergent thinking is critical and divergent thinking is clear, is very clear because we do not, we do not dismiss ideas right away. What we do in divergent thinking is we say, okay, that's a good idea. How can I improve on it? It's another good idea. How can I improve on it? So every time that we create something or an idea is being shared, so when we have a brainstorm between groups, the idea is to always build on top of the ideas of specific people. So this allows us to flare. This allows us to open ourselves up to the different possibilities of a specific idea. People sometimes get the, get the notion that there, when there's a certain idea and it's a bad idea, to dismiss it right away. But Divergent thinking allows us to explore these types of ideas and see if there's something good that we can take from it. So that's the yes and mindset. The second is an activity called the crazy eights. So I was mentioning earlier about the activity of the crazy eights being um, connecting to a specific time limit. So later we'll go through the we'll go through the crazy eights activity. And we'll go through the understanding of why there needs to be a time limit to these specific ideas. So this is for divergent thinking. The second is convergent, convergent thinking. So this is where we take the ideas that are all out there, take ideas that are into space, and what we do is we pull them back down to earth. We pull them back down to earth by way of these two activities called the art gallery and heat maps. So the art gallery allows people to take a look at the different ideas, and the heat maps allows people to select which parts of these ideas do I like. So I'd like to note that these activities are not meant for all types of brainstorming initiatives. So we, we of course, try to understand these different activities, and we try to see what is helpful when we need them during the specific situation. So in this specific situation, um, it's important that divergent and convergent thinking really mix together so that we have something to be able to output, so that something is, so, so that something is presented, so that something is voted on, and so that something is tested. So that's the attitude that we'd like to take in this brainstorming initiative. Okay. So it's also important to note that due to COVID-19, that the brainstorming initiatives or the brainstorming processes might have changed and will continue to change. So it's not always going to be a brainstorming activity that you are beside each other. It's not going to be a brainstorming activity wherein you will be able to talk to the person next to you or even be in the same room uh, like a, for a, with a specific person. So what I'd like to do is what I'd like to introduce. I'd like to introduce a specific tool. So this is a tool called Miro. Miro is basically a digital whiteboard. I do not work for Miro, uh, nor do I. Uh, but, but of course, I recommend it since it's a good tool um, that uh, we've used um, in, in the company to be able to brainstorm on different initiatives. So this is Miro. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to go through a simulation. So note that this won't be as extensive and as, uh, as deep um, as, as I'd like. But I'd want to walk you through the different processes via Miro. 
So what we'll be simulating on is the idea that I'd like to take a look at is a college school portal. So if people have gone through, of course, you've gone through um, the different student accounts or you have your different experiences of how um, the administrators or cashier or, uh, or student activities um, uh, interact with you. Um, this is something that I'd like to put your hats on. And this is something that I'd like I'd like the design challenge to be part of. How, how do we imagine? So how might we? This is an attitude that uh, I, I normally like to propose. How might we imagine the most ideal college school portal that will allow us to communicate with all college students better? Right? So I'll go through this. All right, so I'll, I'll just wait for maybe two minutes um, for people to join. I think the link is being, um, is being shared as we speak before we start this brainstorming session. Okay, so hopefully people can join. Um, hopefully people can be with, be with me as I brainstorm. I was in, I was in college. Uh, just a few years ago. <laughs> so um, hopefully uh, we can have some people join. If not, I'll begin in two minutes. Okay. So hi. So one more minute, I'll just wait for some more people to join. So note that Miro is not the only tool that you can use. Um, there are, of course, manual tools that we can use um, in order to facilitate this brainstorming session. And this is just um, what I chose uh, in terms of the brainstorming session. Okay, so last 30 seconds, then I'll begin my great start session. Okay, last 10 seconds. Okay, we can begin. So, as I mentioned earlier, the the design challenge, and maybe I, maybe I can put it down here. Design challenge. How might college school portal? Right. So using our yes and mindset, um, this is the this is the part where we put our different ideas on a specific board. So if you can imagine the exercise, it's just basically putting ideas here and saying yes and. So so I have my post-it here, so that I can start with college school portal having having. Uh, use mobile applications now and uh, we have mobile phones so if it's mobile app centric yes and so we can add we can add yes and we can make it we can have sms notifications for student activity yes and we can have a calendar which shows Right. 
and we can, we can also schedule organization meetings. And yes, and there should be an organization part with the the organization. So you can talk to anyone for the organization. Yes, and yes, and we can put. We can put hobbies or needs of uh, hobbies or needs of these. We can also have we can also have trivia night. Trivia about not just the officials but Yes, and you can probably add not just talking about the organization, add also grades in the class with SMS notifications. Probably add, you can also probably add library juice. Library recommendations for the student programs. So these, so I'd like, so I'd stop there. But this is the general idea. We can go on and on on the. Yeah, we can always build on top of a certain idea. So, but you notice also that all of these ideas are seem to be. Seem to go, uh, seem to go nowhere, right? Uh, in the sense that um, these are these are different things that need to be fleshed out and need to be understood further um, and need to need to be ideated more. So, with the yes and mindset, now it's the time to translate these ideas into something concrete. So we have something called the crazy eights. So the crazy eights it's very simple. You just get a piece of paper and you. And you fold the piece of paper until you have eight sections. These eight sections represent eight ideas for a specific um, for a, for a specific um, to answer the, the specific uh, brainstorming session. So in our case, this is the design challenge. How might we create a college school portal that allows for better communication? So what we'll do here is We'll go through an exercise called the crazy eights that will allow us to draw or that will allow us to express certain ideas. So the crazy eights, that's why it's eight. So of course it's eight sections, but it's also eight minutes. So each idea represents one minute. So we can go through this. Um, so of course I'm not the best drawer out there. Um, so I'll try my best to, to draw. So, so um, for, for people who are watching that aren't good drawers, uh, Hopefully, you can also forgive me because um, I think I might be the worst drawer here. Um, but we'll go through this exercise in 10 seconds. So, all right. Okay. So, my minute starts now. So, basically, so we mentioned that we will be drawing an app, right? So, in the app, there should be notifications. And these notifications can, oops, sorry. So you can put here grades. You can see here now the grades that are out. All right. So this is a, 
So if people didn't understand what I drew, this is the mobile app, the mobile uh, phone, and then there's a notification already. So if you can imagine just a bell there, and then the grades come out. I think that's that's interesting. Um, what also can happen is um, you can also you can also add a portion here where there is the org chart. So I have. I have 10 seconds. Now I go to the next. So the next idea is, of course, still a mobile phone. And I think it would be interesting to have a map and if you know to where you are and if you want to go, you can probably walk there. So you can probably have a from, you can have a two, and then it will help you also navigate the school. And it can probably also, it can probably also allow for sharing. So this is uh, the, the, the button for sharing. So you can share where you are. So for example, you're also in a, um, for example, you're, you're panicking for a long test or you're panicking before your exam start. Um, you can you can use that um, to to warn to tell your friend that come here please. <laughs> okay, so next another idea. Okay, so I think we mentioned earlier the college organizations, so college orgs. So we can create probably a. Org charts. So, okay. So something like that. And then if you click a specific person, then their profile will come out. So that's also, that could also be here. Um, I think what we can also add is Now I have to move. So next idea. We mentioned earlier. Probably you can we can put here a deadline for tuition payments. So you can probably have here for reminder. also be part of the student portal okay so reminder for tuition payment since for example exams are coming next okay so next i think it would also be interesting um, to be able to uh, collect surveys from students. So this is where the surveys could be could be done. What do you about CBS, 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 CBS. So you can add this. then students can answer. So can be can be smiling, can be neutral, or it can be sad. So that's also possible. All right. Next. can also probably add here uh, different reviews. 
so reviews from teachers. So, example. Me is hard, but uh, but cares. So there could be reviews here also for the student portal, so for specific teachers. So that when you're thinking of getting a specific teacher, um, you can check out the review section of your of your portal. Last two. The last two. We'll focus on the helping part um, of a specific um, of outsourcing. So for example, you need anyone have. So people can reply. People can say, people can reply and say, I have a reviewer, me. Be able to crowdsource um, needs. Okay, last five. Last, uh, and I think um, what I also find uh, interesting is a bulletin board also. So a bulletin board which shows different needs. So this could be, this could be a classmate. This could be. or it could also be for example Crazy eight stops now. So noting the crazy eights. So if you notice the excellent, um, excellent drawings, <laughs> it's important to note that of course for crazy eight, it's not important to get the drawing right. It's important to get the ideas correctly. So in this case, this is why we have the art gallery. So the art gallery is where all of these different ideas converge. So um, if if this were if this was paper, um, you the drawing that you have for the crazy eights is something that you will stick on a board. So in this case, if you can just imagine the crazy eights exercise as here as part of the art gallery. So the art gallery basically the art gallery process basically allows people to view. So just like when you're appreciating art, similar to what I created here. <laughs> um, when you view a specific idea, people can now see what your thoughts are. So the idea of the art gallery is just basically looking at your idea. So the idea of the art gallery is basically just, okay, I view this idea and I take it how I take it. So for example, here, I don't understand what uh, this, uh, this circle to this circle means. I won't be able to understand it. But in the art gallery is, everyone in the group or everyone in part of the brainstorming session can now try to understand your sketch can i can now try to understand your idea all right so that's that's the art gallery process um and what happens in the what happens after the art gallery process is a discussion so of course if there is the art gallery there is the artist so each artist who's created um their specific crazy eights will now go ahead and explain their idea. So it now informs the initial view of the specific viewers of your art, so to speak. Right? So you can now explain 
what your ideas mean. You can now explain, okay, when I meant this, I meant that this is a map. Um, and there's a map going into um, meeting from point A to point B. And possibly the viewers can say, ah, okay, so that's what you meant. But I took it this way. So that's something that, that clarification happens during the art gallery. So the art gallery is a presentation. So the art gallery is basically showing you that, oh, um, um, this is my idea. This is what this is what I thought, or this is how I interpreted your idea. But the artist will now say, "Okay, but I meant it this way, right?" So how does that help? Why is that important? Why is that discussion important? Because the last part is called the heat map. So the heat map, and what I'd like to do is I'd like to focus your screens here, here. The heat map is where people can now vote on your specific ideas. So that in order to help with the combining or the converging of these different ideas, we can have a visual representation of these ideas. So if anyone wants to help vote, um, you, can, you, can create, you can get a, a specific sticky note, uh, sorry, a, a sticker here, a dotted sticker here. And then you can put it on the idea that is interesting for you. So since I put the ideas myself, <laughs> um, I think I'll, I like this idea, right? And it's important to note that when you take a look at the specific ideas, it's not the whole idea that you are, you are voting on. It's the specific part of the drawing that you like. So I can say, oh, I, I don't really particularly like the exam part because it stresses me out. But I like the idea that there are reminders for the tuition payment. For example, for example, I like the idea that there is a meeting, a meeting, a sharing, a sharing button, but not necessarily the the intention of the sharing button, which is the the movement from a specific place or a location, because you're scared that. Uh, people might just share uh, specific locations, right? So that goes around, that, that goes along, um, that, that whole process goes along until you have specific clusters, right? So if there are specific clusters, oh, sorry. If there are specific clusters that the ideas fall under, so for example, you have three or four ideas here, um, four or five ideas here, uh, seven ideas here, you know already, which is interesting to people. You know already what, what the idea is um, worth exploring in terms of voting, not necessarily what you should do, but at least you have a sense of the people brainstorming since they're helping you. Um, should, they should be able to help you try to flesh the idea more. So this is part of the convergence. So no, I mentioned earlier about, about having a decider. So the, decide, the, the decider actually has, sorry, the decider actually has a much bigger say. So normally the decider, um, the decider has the final say with all of the votes, or they have, for example, two votes. Why is that important? Because at least you can break the tie. So for example, if there are people who are taking a look at um, these parts, and then the decider doesn't feel, um, doesn't feel like. Uh, he or she agrees with uh, the group, they can change. The decider can change because the decider has the most authority to decide because normally the decider is the one that will either implement the idea or will sponsor the idea. So when we say sponsor the idea, it normally means that we'll set aside budget to implement the idea, which is why they're very important. So for example, the decider says that um, this whole idea we will implement. Then, of course, everyone helped the decider make the decision, but in the end, the decider will make that specific decision. All right. So, this is an exercise. That, this is an exercise that seems simple, but when you go through an actual brainstorming exercise and you go through all of these different processes, all of the different biases, all of the different mindsets, and all of the different positions of specific people will be part of the drawings, will be part of the brainstorming, will be part of the discussion in the art gallery, and of course, will be part of the humans. And I guess that's part of the brainstorming process. But what these activities do is they try to 
diverge. So open up everyone's thoughts into what's out there, into what can happen, into what can be explored, and allow for convergent thinking, bringing these ideas now back home. And eventually also being able to vote on what can be done moving forward. So this is something that I want you guys to I want you guys to practice also. So this is my homework, right? Uh, so this is the homework for this session. Okay, you can use Miro. You can you can draw it out. You can um, you can use whatever methods you want as long as you accomplish the objective. So the topic is your ideal job hunting platform. So some of you might be looking for a job already. Some of you might be thinking of looking for an internship. Some of you might be looking for a part. That all goes into that specific topic. Now you use the crazy eights method in order to generate eight ideas on how to improve uh, or how to take a look at the ideal job hunting platform. All right, sorry, so please uh, ignore what I mentioned here. But, um, to generate eight ideas on your ideal job hunting platform. Take a picture of your crazy eight sketch. Um, hopefully that's part of your submission so that I can see um, if you did it online or if you did it offline, um, it, it depends on. Based on the eight ideas, show it to your friends. It's much better to, to have validation with the people who are with you in this job hunt. So based on the eight ideas, use heat maps to be able to vote on the three best ideas in your, in your crazy eights. So you have eight ideas, right? So you use the heat maps to vote on the ideas and mark their votes on your sketch. So don't cheat. So don't be the decider by yourself. <laughs> okay. And last, based on the three best ideas, try to incorporate that in one sketch or output. That explains how to add, uh, add these, add the elements in your ideas to the ideal job hunting. All right. So you can use, again, you can use Miro. Miro is free for three boards. Um, you can create an account. Uh, you can feel free to explore other ideas. Um, but yeah, uh, that, that's basically the, the homework. And I hope you found something, um, something useful for this session. Um, again, these are all, um, you can read up on design thinking. You can read up on brainstorming. You can read up on Jake Knapp. Um, you can read up on uh, the Stanford Design School. So all of these are brainstorming activities and brainstorming ideas um, so that you can create a specific output. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I'm Dino. You can email me if you want. Um, this is my email. Uh, feel free to, to email me at dino.algoseba at gmail.com. Thanks, guys. Oops, I was on mute. Thank you so much, Dino, um, for that very insightful talk. Um, I, I learned, I mean, we've been doing this together. Um, so full disclosure, I, I used to work with Dino for a company called Storm um, before we went on different paths already. Um, but we were both in products. So we used to do this all the time. We actually used to do this with our interns, even in Storm. So it's a process that, um, we've practiced for quite some time, but I still learned uh, so much from, from watching you do it again because I feel like some parts of it um, I learned through reading the book. And, you know, yeah. it's nice to be reminded also of like, okay, why, why do we do crazy eights? I think something that I completely, I think, glossed over maybe is the whole yes and. And by, it just hit me that yes and is such a good such a good starting point because the whole yes and means there's no bad ideas like when something is posted there it's like yeah let's go with that and you know the, this too this too this too so it's like we're not judging the ideas on the table already because we're always saying yes to it and i think that's something that i still need to remember when we do brainstorming like it's 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 something that I think I glossed over really reading the box. And I love that you mentioned sprint mm. again. I think I'm not sure if like this is the third or the second time we've mentioned the sprint book in 
in this group in our early of learning. Ah, community. okay. <laughs> yeah, no, because like you know, I think design thinking is a topic that we've we've discussed a couple of times um, here. Uh, the Stanford Design School is also something because, uh, well, Dino's also, um, I think, been exposed to one of my talks on designing your life. Kasi. So he knows that it's it mm-hmm. derives on um, Sprint and Designing Your Life, which are the founders of the uh, Stanford Design School, actually. But again, if you guys have any questions, so we're just waiting for um, some questions mm-hmm. to come in. If you have questions about the homework or questions about the process, or questions for Dino about maybe, you know, product management as well, um, go ahead and, and ask that now. I think also um, something I've, I've just been very curious about with that whole process, and you touched on it a bit, how it's the process doesn't super account for, you know, certain biases that people might have. Um, and I how do you, I guess, in your line of work, how do you make sure that that's minimized at the very least? Um, that certain biases mm-hmm. towards certain ideas are, are minimized? Okay, so that's, again, that's a good question, Nandiri. So um, I think the book mentions on the preparation before you actually do this specific activity um, such that uh, when, you, when you assign specific people to these specific roles, that has to be taken into consideration. So when you select people to be part of the brainstorming session, there has to be an understanding already of the participants. Are these participants going to, for example, fight each other? Or are these participants, for example, going to have uh, clashing ideas? So if that's not if that's not going to bring about the atmosphere that you want, which is the brainstorming session, then it might be better that you do not include these people in the mix. No? So it's also important to note that, but at the same time note that everyone should be there and have a different perspective on things. So it's not it's not good also to have group think. So that that's also something that you have to balance. No, trying to balance between the people that might not contribute extensively to the discussion, which is your output. So if you look at the design process, the output is really a prototype that you can test. That's a very simple thing to, to take a look at. But the, the whole sprint process is about collaboration and brainstorming. So you have to have people who have different perspectives, but won't also, but won't also try to uh, remove uh, the, the culture that you want to bring, which is collaboration. So I guess that's how, that's how I tackle it. So I guess to answer it specifically, I'd understand first who I'd want to invite. Then if there are people that I feel that will not contribute to the discussion, I'll probably schedule them in a different session so that um, it, will, it won't hinder the collaboration. All right. I think that's, that's a really good answer, Dino, especially when it comes to like, when it comes to brainstorming like this, you really want to focus on, on for example, the solution you're coming up with or the customers that you're trying to help instead of like trying to manage um, certain people in the group and making sure that you know you all work harmoniously it's good to really have the entire group i think focusing also on on one specific person or problem that you you want to fix and not really the relationships or the dynamics between the group so okay, um, thank you. that's a very that's a very good answer so we have um, a question here from emmanuel who's asking how do you deal okay. with aggressive or pushy people while doing brainstorming sessions? <laughs> Ooh. Interesting question. Okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm sure you probably have had that experience in my mind, which is why you're asking, you know. <laughs> um, so uh, I just I I guess um it's that's why it's important to have the activities that I uh, that I explain because they actually remove the aggressiveness or the assertiveness of specific people because normally in a brainstorming session it's just the topic is on the board and the loudest uh, the loudest person in the room can actually sway everyone but if you go through the process if you go through my step the step by step process that i imagine you'll notice that everyone will have their different ideas everyone um, will be given the chance to speak in the art gallery and everyone will be given a vote with the heat maps. 
So with that whole process, you already remove the people who are naturally. So it's also sometimes not their fault that they're naturally insistent on their idea, especially if their idea is very is, is very good. But the intention of the whole process is to be able to have the best idea come out in the most natural way possible, which is why we have these structured activities that will allow everyone to, to, uh, to give their output without sacrificing their personalities as well. So, yeah, if that helps. I think um, it's very great what Dino introduced to us today um, because I think that's really... That's really the whole point of putting a lot of structure behind it. Because if once you start putting rules around what you're supposed to do or instructions, um, there is a lot less room for for certain personalities to be able to sway. Um, I love, I specifically love the democracy around have you know um, putting stickers or putting votes into ideas, um, ideas in a sketch. Mm. So you're not really voting for this person's entire like crazy eight um, paper, but you are voting on a certain idea. So now I think mm. that's what's great about the whole convergence of it because at the end, not the best one idea proposed by this person wins. It's not a contest of like, I had, I got more stickers on my sheet, you got less stickers, but more on like, the best parts of each person's <laughs> ideas comes out. Um, and that's one, I think, I guess to answer your question very plainly now, dealing how to deal with the aggressive or pushy people would be really enforcing or putting a structure around the brainstorming session would be the best way to do yeah. that. All right, okay. do, you, do we have more questions? So I'll give you about like one more minute to try to type in um, your questions, because um, we don't have a follow-up question from Emmanuel, but if you guys have any more, any more at all to ask, um, you can go ahead and ask that. Um, maybe while we're waiting for uh, more questions to come in, you know, maybe you want some, we want to say some final words for the group on brainstorming. Okay. Um, I think I, I didn't also touch on it a lot, um, but it's also important to note that sometimes the bias um, will come in the form of the decider. Because I mentioned in the initial process, right, that you have to appoint a specific decider. And uh, sometimes what happens there is the final vote um, will, will, now, will now be under the decider. So it's also important since you, since um, being part of the team that uh, creates the whole atmosphere, to also take a look at the designer and prime the designer. Because the designer might also come in thinking that his idea is the one that uh, he'll bring to the table. So note that the designer is not going to be part of the idea generation process. The designer is plainly the person who will decide on the final idea. He won't be able to be given the chance to be part of the process but he should be briefed as to the different um, the different uh, things that came out during the process. So the sprint uh, the sprint book has five days. So normally the decider comes in at the start and then comes in at the end, but is briefed by the project manager during the whole time. So I think that's something that I wanted to, to share. The, the second is in terms of brainstorming, it's also important to note that there, there can also be too many people in a room. So I think that's something that I also didn't mention, but that's something that uh, affects the dynamics of the group. So it's important to note that probably you can just have five to seven maximum people in a specific brainstorming session. Um, if, if it becomes more than 10, it becomes unwieldy, and you end, up, you end up taking a lot of time from everyone, especially in the art gallery and in the heat maps. Everyone will look at the different ideas already. So it might just waste people's time um, considering that the whole process is taxing. The whole process is five days um, if, you, if you follow the whole sprint process. So I guess that's just it. Um, and um, I'm, I'm also thankful that uh, Deirdre gave me this chance to revisit um, all of my notes on sprint and all of my notes on design thinking. It's something that I truly 
love. It's something that I truly like. Um, brainstorming with a purpose. So yeah, thanks. Um, you know, we have two more questions actually here. Um, and one of them you kind of touched on, but um, I'll read that later. So we have an, a follow-up question kasi from Emmanuel. He's asking, do you recommend that there should be a facilitator who would not be a part of the of a participant of the brainstorming process to effectively manage it? Yes. So, um, so I didn't mention this, um, but in the book, it, it specifically uh, reminds you or specifically recommends to have a facilitator. So, um, so Deirdre and I were normally the facilitators in, in our own uh, brainstorming sessions. Um, and we noticed that uh, a facilitator, since the, since the facilitator is mainly just there to facilitate the session, will not be able to add any bias. So there should really be a facilitator outside of the people who are part of the actual brainstorming session. All right. Yeah, actually, that is another way to make sure that people actually adhere to the rules um, is to have a facilitator there who's really following the structure um, and the instructions behind, behind what you're supposed to do. We have a third question, which I think which Dino actually already sort of answered, but I don't know if you have something to add. Um, so we have Isabel Luna, who actually worked with us before. So um, she, she said, hi, D and Dino. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> um, but just wondering, is there an ideal number of people in each brainstorming session? I can imagine it can be hard if there are too many people in the group. Um, Dino, you said five to seven people, but I don't know if you want to expound on that answer further. Okay. Um, so it's five to seven people, but um, mentioning the criteria that I mentioned earlier, you know, na they can't be you know, contributing the same ideas uh, too much. Like for example, if you, if you look at it as a company, hopefully um, the group will have one, one person in this department, for example, marketing, or this person in this department, for example, accounts, one person for uh, IT, so that there will really be divergent thinking naturally. Um, and that will allow for the, for the brainstorming process to be holistic. So the five to seven is, is a gauge, mainly, mainly for unwieldiness. No? Um, Deirdre and I had one, and there were, I think, I think there were 15 or 20, but we split them into two groups because there were two brainstorming sessions that happened at the same time. So that can happen, but we had two facilitators and then, of course, it, it also was a bit taxing. So, so yeah. Uh, hi, Isa. <laughs> All right. Um, so I'm not sure if that's the last question already, but those are very, I think we learned so much also, even in just the Q&A knowing how many people you should be inviting mm. to a brainstorming session. You, you know, I think it's good because intuitively we think, you know, more people contributing, more quality of ideas, more diversity. But um, <laughs> if you think of the, if you think of like there is a structure behind it and you would want everyone to be able to have the time to speak up, then you would be better off deciding like, Maybe I would focus more on the quality of ideas, um, having a diversity of perspectives, and making sure that each person is able to really contribute to this. Um, maybe like one final question for me, Dino, since we don't have any more questions. Do you have any suggestions for like the type of people that can be good facilitators for, for a brainstorming session? Or possibly like what kind of skills should a facilitator of a brainstorming session have? Okay. Okay. Um, so I think something that is very key uh, is the coordination aspect. I think that's one because you, if you put a structure in place, you have to be the master of that structure. So you should already know um, when to do certain things. So that's the practical skill that I think would be important. But there's also a sensitivity to the to the facilitator so it's very important for the facilitator to be sensitive to the needs of the participants so it now it, it sounds very counseling or very you know, no no but um i think that the important part of uh, being a facilitator is being able to know also if the people that you are facilitating get you and you get them so that's that's very that's a that's a very important skill um lastly i think it it would also help 
So it would also help if you are very good in terms of communication. Um, because being part of a facilitator, you will need to understand quickly specific stimulus coming at you, specific words from this person, specific words from this person, this person who meant this, but actually meant this. Um, so the, the sensitivity and the communication skills will help you become a better facilitator um, and will help you understand the group better because the goal of the facilitator is exactly that, to be able to create a group that will produce a specific output out of the whole facilitation session. Um, chapter help, it's also helpful to, um, to be very good in terms of, you know, presentation skills. Like if you can create a very good um, flow or a very good diagram of what you want to discuss, then that's well and good. But for the actual, you know, raw brainstorming sessions that normally don't need any PowerPoint presentations or, or whatever, you just need to have those soft skills and you should be on your way. All right. Thank you so much, Dino, for those tips, especially for those who would possibly want to try to facilitate their own brainstorming sessions. I know you guys um, at work or maybe in a school org that you're part of, um, I, those are helpful tips and things to keep in mind when you are the one facilitating the brainstorming session. So thank you so much, Dino, for, for joining us this afternoon, for, for teaching us how to do like a brainstorming session and even introducing a new tool for us to try out. That's super cool. So thank you so much again. Um, tomorrow, I just wanted to remind everyone that tomorrow is day eight of the Liab Learning Challenge. And we have another interesting topic actually tomorrow. So um, the teacher tomorrow is coming from uh, Union Bank's um, customer experience team. So she's a customer experience designer in Union Bank. If you've experienced any of their, like, or seen any of their ads to their, to their new digital banking, uh, yeah, digital banking app, for example, um, she's part of the team that designed that. And that makes it happen and pushes it. So tomorrow, she will be teaching us how to get things done or how to make things happen. How, that's how she wants to call her talk. But it's really all about project management. Because I think given like how we started with empathy and now uh, we just learned about how to ideate, I think part of it is also execution how do you then proceed with the next steps of what you get from your brainstorming session and um, colleen from union bank will be able to expound on that more tomorrow so i do hope you guys tune in at 5 p.m live tomorrow in our group if you have anyone who you think would benefit from learning that skill or learning some concepts around it um, please do invite them to the group the joining the lee of learning challenge is completely free and if you want the certificate for any of the previous challenges that we've done before all you have to do is to submit your homework to our group dino will be posting in our group um, after this live video um, to clarify the instructions or send the instructions again and you can comment your submission to his post all right so thank you so much everyone and see you